name is Mercy. Welcome to my channel. I'm super excited for you to be here. In this video, I'm going to continue with my Your World concept series, specifically talking about adrenal insufficiency. So now there's so much that you can um, study that you have to study uh, for adrenal insufficiency, but specifically, I'm going to talk about how to be able to differentiate it from primary versus secondary versus tertiary. Tertiary, we don't need to know so much of, but we definitely need to know how to be able to differentiate from primary and secondary. So I'm going to talk about what is primary versus secondary and tertiary um, and then talk about what causes a primary what causes a secondary how can you differentiate it via labs and um, via the vignette so let's get started if you're interested keep on watching make sure you subscribe hit the like button and do share this video because it will be really helpful and definitely follow me on my instagram account mercy medical <laughs> So let's first talk about the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access. So essentially you have the hypothalamus that produces CRH, which is a hormone that stimulates the anterior pituitary to stimulate an, or to produce another hormone, ACTH. ACTH is produced in the anterior pituitary, uh, which then gets secreted, gets into the bloodstream, goes to the adrenal gland, stimulates it to produce the hormones that are produced in the adrenal gland. So remember, adrenal gland, you have the adrenal cortex and then the adrenal medulla. The adrenal uh, cortex is where we're gonna focus on because that produces three things. You have your sex hormones, your glucocorticoids, and your mineral corticoids. Those are the ones that we're gonna focus on. So ACTH stimulates and causes production of the hormones. The cortisol, which is super important hormone, it goes to the hypothalamus and the pituitary and tells it to stop producing more ACTH, essentially to, um, to stop producing more of cortisol. So now let's define adrenal insufficiency. Adrenal insufficiency is not producing the hormones. So cortisol is down because it's either the adrenal cortex is down or the anterior pituitary is down or the hypothalamus is down. So now the primary is going to be an adrenal cortex or the adrenal gland is down. Insufficiency obviously means that it's not working, right? It's insufficient. So the adrenal gland is insufficient in doing what it normally should be doing. So if you have an adrenal gland shot, so adrenal gland is screwed you're not going to have a problem with the hypothalamus nor with the pituitary because it's the adrenal gland so now let's think about it if the adrenal gland is not producing those three hormones you're going to have decrease in cortisol decrease in aldosterone decrease in the sex hormones right what does that say with the hypothalamus and the pituitary? They're going to be producing their hormones. Remember, negative feedback. The cortisol is not coming out and it's not produced in um, a sufficient level to go back and stimulate the hypothalamus and the uh, pituitary to stop producing ACTH. So if nobody's telling them to stop, they're going to continue on. So now you have high levels of ACTH because nobody's telling it to stop. So therefore, um, the ACTH is going to be produced in excess, in excess in a primary primary adrenal insufficiency. Before we get into the details of what the primary adrenal insufficiency is going to look like, let's define a secondary. So secondary is going to be where the anterior pituitary is shot or something's wrong with the anterior pituitary where it's not producing um, ACTH. So we're going to, obviously anterior pituitary has a lot of other hormones that it's going to produce, but we're specifically going to uh, focus on the ACTH. So it's not producing ACTH, so what happens? You have low levels of cortisol, because remember ACTH has to stimulate the adrenal gland to produce cortisol. So if it doesn't stimulate, you don't have cortisol, and therefore cortisol is not going to come inhibit the hypothalamus or the anterior pituitary. So therefore the CRH at this point is gonna be high and the anterior pituitary is going to obviously, something's wrong with the anterior pituitary so you're not producing ACTH, so you have low levels of ACTH. So remember in the primary you had high levels of ACTH because the adrenal gland was the problem. It wasn't producing the cortisol which causes that negative inhibition. You have low cortisol, low ACTH, and a high CRH in someone that has a secondary adrenal insufficiency. Now, of course, the tertiary is going to have low levels of cortisol, low levels of ACTH, and low levels of CRH because so CRH is not being produced by the hypothalamus. So in the case of a primary uh, adrenal insufficiency, the adrenal is insufficient. Don't mix it up. Remember, adrenal insufficiency, if it's primary, this is an Addison's disease. Let's focus on the mineral corticoids. 
Remember, the adrenal gland is going to produce mineral corticoids. So if you don't have the adrenal gland working, mineral corticoids is not going to be working. So if you don't have the mineral corticoid, you're not going to have aldosterone being secreted, um, and therefore you don't have absorption of sodium and excretion of potassium. So in your lab report, they're going to give you hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, and they're going to have hypotension, right, because of that lack of water um, coming through with the sodium normally. So those are three things you definitely have to remember with adrenal deficiency. Now the other bigger clue that they will give you is hyperpigmentation. Because you have excessive amount of ACTH, it builds up and then it backs up and then the other um, hormones to also be in excess, which is your, uh, which is involved with pigmentation. So, so far we talked about four things. You have hyponatremia, hyperkalemia, hypotension, and you have hyperpigmentation. With the secondary uh, adrenal insufficiency, you have not as severe symptoms. With this, this is going to be central related because it's going to be anterior pituitary that's involved therefore you don't have the sex hormones and glucocorticoids however with mineral corticoids because the RAS system which is the renal aldosterone um, angiotensin system that system is still working so that's going to be the one that stimulates the uh, mineral corticoids to be produced ACTH doesn't have to do with that so that changes things up and that's where they can um, question you and see if you know um, and that's why they want to question you because that is an important factor. The lab report is not going to have like it did in the primary, won't have hyperkalemia. So you do not have hyperkalemia because the mineral corticoids is not affected by ACTH. So mineral corticoids is still being produced. So you don't have hypotension, you don't have hyperkalemia, and you don't have hyperpigmentation. Why don't you have hyperpigmentation because ACTH is not being produced so that pathway is not going to be built up and therefore uh, you know pigmentation is not going to be involved so no hyperpigmentation no hyperkalemia um, and no hypotension with primary it could have an autoimmune that's actually the most common cause of adrenal insufficiency in autoimmune or it could be someone that just uh, came out of delivery so because they lost a lot of blood and that's a key word that they will give you they'll say that there was complicated delivery so they hemorrhaged a lot and therefore a lot of blood loss caused the um, ischemia of the adrenal gland which caused it to become insufficient so that is a huge clue towards a primary versus a secondary a secondary they're going to give you a person that has been on glucocorticoids for longer than three weeks because what happens with a glucocorticoid that's a cortisol right so you're they're basically giving an exogenous cortisol so when you provide the cortisol the cortisol is going to stimulate the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary it's basically that you're providing that negative feedback they've been on it for a long time they have lack of stimulation of adrenal glands so obviously if a muscle is not working doing its job it's going to eventually uh, atrophy a patient that's on glucocorticoids that have abruptly stopped where is the cortisol coming from? Remember, we are very, very dependent on cortisol. So if the cortisol is not being provided, whether by the adrenal gland or exogenously, so if you were given exogenously and you abruptly stopped glucocorticoids, now you have a problem. You're going to have a secondary adrenal insufficiency because the ACTH is not stimulating the adrenal gland because it was depending on the glucocorticoids that was being provided exogenously. So the adrenal gland is not producing, not because it doesn't work, not because the adrenal gland is to blame, it's because the ACTH isn't being produced. Why? Because there was the exogenous uh, glucocorticoids that was being provided that was inhibiting the hypothalamus and inhibiting the anterior pituitary. Does that make sense? I hope it does because it does, right? So I think that's it for this video. Remember adrenal insufficiency, there's so much more than just this video. So I'll try to do more videos on it, but this was the important um, differentiation between a primary versus a central or a secondary. Okay, so I really hope that helps. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Please make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and follow me on my Instagram. And definitely do share this video as that will be super helpful. So more videos to come. I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.